Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka GeekXX Chic and I'm back with another reaction. This time it is to the second part of the Else Worlds crossover event on the CW. This is technically an episode of Arrow, but of course as it's part of the whole crossover event, it's a special super duper unique episode of stuff. So for those of who have watched my videos before, if you've watched my videos from last season, you know that I don't actually watch Arrow. <laughs> so that's just, uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome! Thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos. Um, but yes, I should preface by saying I do not watch Arrow. I did in season one, but um, I just found that it really didn't hold my interest. And then going into season two, I just couldn't do it. So I don't actively watch the show. I do vaguely know what's going on, usually through crossover events or just from the odd drop that happens in shows like The Flash. But honestly, I don't know all of the characters. I don't know all the arcs that are going on. So if I make any statements during my reactions that sound really ignorant, it's because I am. I don't know what's going on with the show. And so I'm probably not going to get all the references as much as I would get the ones from The Flash. But either way, I like to just enjoy it for the episode that it is, since they usually tend not to get too deeply into the actual storyline that's going on in the show that they're focusing on for the crossover episode. The first episode, which was yesterday with The Flash, was super good. I laughed my butt off. It was so much fun to watch, and I'm hoping we still have some more good times in this episode. Since Barry is literally walking in Oliver's shoes in this whole crossover event, Barry by nature is a very happy and bright person, so it'll be interesting to see how he maneuvers working with a completely different team, working with Felicity. I mean, Felicity and him got along in the past, so I don't think that'll be an issue, but it'll be interesting to see how Barry brings his perspective on things to the darker and, yeah, you know, shadier, shadier dealings of Star City. So without further ado, let's get into this episode and then I'll chat about it afterwards. Oh, and for the record, I'm not going to do a separate review video for this because, again, it's Arrow and it's not really a show that I watch, but I will chat for a few minutes after this episode about what I think about how it fits into the crossover as a whole. Cool? Cool. Let's do this. Boo. My name is Oliver Queen. <laughs> After six months in hell, I have been released from prison no, and returned home with only one goal. What? Wait. To save my city. But things have changed. No. Instead of operating outside the law, I am now working alongside the police. I am no longer inmate for... Yes, go! The Green Arrow. I love that he got to do the intro! The really? Does that include the murder of... Four August fueled agents. Well, the balls on this one. Is that any way to greet your friends? All I know is that whenever the three of you show up, it usually means we have one huge problem. It's your backs, but come on, you know you miss us. Come on, Diggle. An immortal Egyptian, aliens, parallel Earth Nazis, I have no idea why I'm even surprised. At this <laughs> you got the right the energy life. there, Dig. I called Felicity. Wait, wait, you called Felicity? Yeah, okay. Right, well, I guess that makes sense because technically you are her husband. I'm confused. <laughs> Me too, Dick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is. <laughs> sad. <laughs> you would never say oh, that! Um, See, and I have enough problems as it is without introducing body swapping. We thought we just let her think everything's normal. And yeah, because that's going to go well. Barry and I are so. Uh, Barry, there's something I'd like to discuss before we get I can't take him in the suit. I just can't. I'm sorry, Stephen Amell. Oliver, you don't believe Batman's real? He's not real. He's an urban legend concocted by the Gotham Police Department. R really? The Green Arrow just said that. Okay. okay. It might not be my real face if we don't sort this mess out, so could you? Really, Barry? You're going to school somebody about exposing themselves too much? Okay. You really got around back in the day, didn't you? One time, Oliver cheated on his girlfriend with her sister. Hey, yeah, that happened. Oh, oh. You did. That happened. Nice. You still think he's a myth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. Don't you let no one tell you different, Bear? Why is this truck just slowly driving behind? Yeah. Really, it's a road. Well done. Woo! Okay, Barry. Yes. I like seeing him kick ass for one. Oliver, stand down. Get yeah, relax, Bear. Although I'm liking this smolder he's got going on, some blue steel and stuff. Just. Where he needs us, goes help on this one. I've been summoned. 
Interestingly, the atmospheric phenomenon ceased the moment Barry and Oliver left Central City. It's like it packed up its bags and. Do they know they're, they're not they're supposed to tell Felicity? Because I don't think they do. Related to Barry and okay, Oliver's Caleb. body swap. That's mm. knew it. <clears throat> you uh. You didn't tell her. No. Again. <laughs> <I'm telling laughs> Jacob, you. Ah! What? I need a gift for that face immediately. So what would you have done? What I would have done is super spaz right out of there. That's what I was thinking. All like, the is a gust of wind. Right? Why? Why would you even I'm standing there? Yeah. Wayne left Gotham three years ago. Why? To go where? Join the Justice League? You're visiting Gotham to compare grappling hooks with Batman, and you are out of luck. No one's seen him in years. Compare grappling hooks. Noise. I would never. Compare myself to a total badass like Batman. <laughs> what I think Oliver, Oliver. Was trying to say. <laughs> is thank you for getting us out of jail. What Oliver? I'm loving this. Gotham has enough problems without a guy in green leather showing off his arrows to everyone. So. W wow, the metaphor is okay. Really Iris was able to tell that something was off with Barry. No, not exactly. Oh, totally. I mean, it was like lover's intuition. That's how you can tell. Oh, yes, let's go. Oh, yes, strange. you prep. You prop West so Island. Yes. You stole data from the police. <laughs> oh, the Flash did it. Ah, <laughs> the penny. I aspire to it for both of them. That Iris probably has a little bit more experience as well, and maybe. That's why she would have seen something that you didn't. And West Allen is the golden standard, let's be real. Okay. Yeah. All the corporate billionaires I know wear Versace and have 500 fewer tattoos. Mm. And those are the ones that you can see. Oh, wow, TMI! History. Yeah. Bat Cave? Bat Cave? Wow, okay, girl, she's got that determined stare and the head tilt and everything down. Okay. Open the. Get the book, you can fix this. I got it. Do some old fashioned snooping. Look at her strikes. Another flash from a parallel universe, just lightning's in, tells us to jump when we ask how high. If you want to sort this thing out, then yes. Okay, Barry, since when do you not trust other speedsters? Oh, never mind. Okay, has no one ever taken a mop and a broom to this asylum? Like, why are they always so dirty? What's blue and what and red and oh, I like riddles. Guggenheim, I see what you did there, Mark. Well done. Hot. Wait, did you see? See if she saw Barry naked. Go ahead, Diggle. Go ahead, show him why you boss. Yes. Woo. Tell them! Oh, no! 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 Not my baby! Oh, you sons of- Thank God! Oh my God! Kill them! Kill them dead! Rip them to shreds! How dare they! Yes! This goes in love again! <laughs> What is that? No one's coming to save you. Seriously? What? No one's coming to save you. Wait, these will have to be hallucinations. You should have killed me when you had the chance. Thank God this is a hallucination. I almost had a heart attack. That is so cool that they're seeing each other's nemesis. That is amazing. They're just fighting air. Or each other? Oh my god, this is amazing! I'm sorry, but this is just making me think of the potential of Barry could actually fight, how cool it would be. You're a killer, a depraved monster who found a way to channel his darkness. And oh my god, they're both gonna know each other's deepest fears. Beat me too slow, big heart. Mama raised you right, so right. You couldn't stop me from killing her. Wow. Theme of the episode. Okay, that was a sweet move. I just want to see how you're doing. I'm that was deep. 
Compartmentalizing so true. Felicity. Barry, I always thought that you had it easy. Everything was just sunshine and rainbows. And <laughs> a little bit. Everybody likes you. He is very cute. You have real steel on you, my friend. Yes, he does. You can carry any burden thrown your way. Or he just runs into the past and tries to fix it. He made it! Jay! No. Oh my god, Dad. Oh. My name is Barry Allen. Hello, John. What? Do I know you? You're not wearing your ring. Who? Things must be different here. <gasps> Barry. Lantern? Where's the guy? What? We got a situation. Cisco. <laughs> Poor Cisco. He's like, I stepped out of the room for a minute. You're gonna stand down. Really? You don't even know what he can do yet. No. He says you were testing us. What? And thus far, Is he dead? Us, you are the first of those I've placed under fire who have managed to retrieve the Book of Destiny. Well, John wasn't that bright. For all the guys who squandered it on a petty dream, do better think bigger really i'm at a loss speed force language Ooh. You went to get deep in the book. are you guys part of the jets now no. are we a west side story more all over ptsd oh Wow, okay, Ollie. Damn. Well, they didn't take that away. <laughs> Barry, with the scared run, everything's back to normal. Uh oh. There's no place you can run where I can't find you. Oh dear. Guys, I'm sorry, I cannot remember what black suit Superman, like that was like Zod's uniform, right? Zod's colors and Zod's uniform, but it's still the. It's still a Superman emblem. Well, that was part two of Elseworlds, which was the Arrow themed episode. And it was fun too. Uh, definitely, I feel like the addition of the whole body swap storyline definitely added a little bit more lighthearted fare to a show that's typically, again, got a darker theme, but it definitely felt darker. There's no doubt about it. Like compared to the Flash episode, which was like almost a joke a minute and really kind of, you know, shiny and glossy, even the lighting. I noticed it so much in the Flash episode compared to this one. The lighting that they use is so different in these two worlds. You know, the Flash, we had a lot of yellows and a lot of, you know, bright colors, a lot of day shoots, where this one, we kind of had a mixture of both, but for the most part, all of it was done at night, a lot more night shoots, a lot more dark colors. Of course, the skies are still red everywhere right now, but you get my point. It definitely had a little bit more of a heavier feel and a lot of action as well. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna do a separate review video for this one because again, it's, it's I don't really actually watch Arrow. So uh, just a few points that I thought were really interesting, just kind of continuing this theme that we got from the last episode of, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm starting to talk about this, by the way, you can watch my review video for The Flash or the first part of Elseworlds, which is up on my channel right now. But yeah, in that episode, they really, took the time, the writers, to show, as I mentioned, how Barry and how Oliver both function, not only as human beings, but as superheroes, and kind of what they use to fuel themselves and to push themselves forward. And I thought the one of the best parts of this episode, again, was kind of one of the smaller moments where they had that hallucinogen where Barry got to see who Oliver's worst enemy or his inner fears came from and vice versa. Oliver got a taste of what Barry's worst fears and where all of his kind of darkness comes from. And that was fantastic because the biggest takeaway that I think a person could get from actually getting to swap places with someone else is to really see their deepest fears. Because as human beings, I think that's the thing we, we just forget about each other is that all of us have a, a demon we're fighting of some kind. Do you know what I mean? All of us have got something that deeply troubles us, something that we're always kind of running from, fears or, or trauma that we're trying to live through. And it's easy from the outside, we look at some people and maybe because they don't necessarily wear that, we don't always realize that people are dealing with pain or we don't realize how strong someone is 
because of what they've been through. And I love that they both kind of had that really quick conversation where Barry was like, because I mean, in Barry's case, he knows Oliver's damaged, right? Oliver <laughs> has made it kind of clear through the way he treats people again, as I mentioned. Plus, he's got the physical scars. It's not hard to tell that he hasn't had a great go of it. But in the same respect, Oliver was raised by billionaires. He had the perfect life before what happened to him on the island. So a lot of people probably look at Oliver and figure like, oh, like, is he just man painting it up? Like, how bad can it be? But Barry got a taste of seeing just how much fear and how much trauma that he's, that Oliver's dealing with on a daily basis. And as he said so brilliantly, where he's like, I'm compartmentalizing everything that just happened here as I always do. That's Oliver's way of dealing with it, right? He kind of takes it, puts it on a box and shoves it somewhere. And then he, as he mentioned last episode, he draws on that, you know, kind of leeches from it when he needs to kind of dig deep and do what he needs to do as the Green Arrow. But it was good for Barry to understand that, you know, Barry likes to say to people a lot, like, enjoy life, be happier, which isn't bad advice, but Barry sometimes needs a reality check to see that not everybody can handle their pain the same way. And also that when you have so much of it, it's a lot to carry and some of us are better doing it than others some of us have better coping mechanisms but again it's just that awareness that allows for empathy for him to be, you know be able to kind of get past a little bit of why Oliver is sometimes a bit short-tempered and a little bit brusque um, and conversely you got Oliver who I love it that he said it because we saw it in the last episode when he accused Barry of, oh you need your pep types all the time and everything's so great and as he said we've we've heard him say that in previous seasons as well. He's always like, oh, you know, Barry, my life isn't as sh shiny as yours. Like, not everything's so great in my life. Like, he kind of somewhat mocks Barry because he has that upbeat disposition. And again, there's a huge misconception with a lot of people in this world that if someone is upbeat and happy and has a positive disposition, it's because that they had no problems, that life's just been easy street. But he understands now that for a lot of people out there, it's a choice, you know, that to be happier, to be positive, to focus on good things is a choice that they make. In Barry's case, he does focus on the positive. He's got this amazing, what is it Joe said way back in, I think season two, that Barry's real superpower is hope. He's always so hopeful. He always has that glass half full, optimistic viewpoint on things. And that's how he chooses to go through life. And that's how he fuels the flash. But it doesn't mean he hasn't been through stuff and that he doesn't constantly battle some very dark places. And we've seen that, you know, through the flash, we've definitely seen him battle those inner demons and the loneliness and the pain and the guilt that he's been experiencing ever since what happened to his mother. So for Oliver to get another really personal insight into that and seeing how Eobard because the thing is, what I think they didn't really elaborate on, but I feel like probably happened, is they probably felt the emotions that each other would have felt at seeing these visages of their worst fears. So I think Oliver probably felt a very familiar pain and fear that he's felt in his life, but then he got to see it through Barry's eyes and see, again, what Barry is dealing with. And just because Barry doesn't wear it on his exterior and he doesn't kind of choose to tell everybody about it or dwell on it, the way that some people do, it doesn't mean that he hasn't been through it, that he doesn't still deal with those demons as it were. So I really like that. I love anything where characters get enriched and I feel like both Barry and Oliver got that enrichment by getting to see something so personal that they probably would never tell each other about, especially Oliver. You know, Oliver was never gonna get that deep with, with anyone ideally, maybe outside of maybe Felicity. So that was a great moment. Loved, loved, loved seeing that. And I think that's for me, one of the coolest parts of the episode. Really liked seeing how they set up Gotham, I think for, I thank you for the people in the comments who let me know that they're gonna be doing a Batwoman series and that's who, like this whole set I think we were introduced to is what we're gonna, we're, well, what they're gonna see in the Batwoman show. Yeah, those are kind of the parts that I thought were really, really sweet. It was nice seeing the Geek Squad, but I love watching Felicity and Cisco work together. It's one of my favorite combos that doesn't happen nearly enough. And, oh, speaking of that sort of thing, I just got to call out the West Island enemies, got to call out that, of course, Cisco is a big old shipper of West Island like the rest of us. You know, he's a firm supporter, and I love that he called out right off the bat that, oh yeah, Iris knew. It was like, what do they call it? Love ESP or something like that. It's like, yeah, it's like, like a lover's ESP. She knew like right away something was off. She pretty much figured out instantly that something was off and that that wasn't Barry. But in fairness to those Elicity fans out there, before we start any shipper wars, which I'm not trying to do, Felicity only been around fake Oliver for like 13 seconds, comparatively to Iris who woke up in the same bed and spent like the whole day before she started to really figure it out. So 
in fairness, we gotta give Felicity a pass because she didn't spend as much time with fake Oliver to really get a chance. Anyways, I just loved seeing, you know, I loved hearing Cisco just shout out and, and prop for my ship that way because he's so cute when he does. As far as the whole Elseworlds storyline stuff, we got some progression in the sense of at least now our heroes know about the Monitor. They know what he's doing as far as testing them. We got a lot of backstory. Again, thank you so much to my subscribers who put that information in the comments about the higher level. They put it for not this past episode, but last week's episode of The Flash. Thank you so much. So again, they kind of confirmed in this episode, Monitor gave us a little bit of exposition about who he is, why he's doing what he's doing. He did not say the word anti-Monitor, but I think that's safe to say that that's what they're plugging towards. The Crisis on Infinite Earth, um, the Crisis series, I think is what it was. People said that's what it leads up to. And that, of course, would feed into the disappearance of Barry Allen in the future. So things seem to be going on the same track as Nora's future at the moment, which I'm not sure if I'm happy with. But there's a lot of people who theorize that whenever we finally get to that giant crisis, that'll probably be the final season of The Flash. So we'll see. I don't like to think about that yet, though. I want The Flash to go for at least a couple more seasons before I even think about the end of it at this point. But yeah, it was a good episode. Uh, I think, like I said, tonally a little bit different, but still entertaining, still great moments. I loved seeing Oliver and Barry both trolling each other. <laughs> and being petty with each other while they're doing this whole thing. I think that was kind of fun. Like, come on, if you're stuck in there, you had to have fun with it. But interestingly, so Monitor saw that this John dude totally screwed the pooch with this whole book thing and yet gave it to him again. But I guess he must be seeing something or not. But I'm like, really, sir? Really? Anyway, John got uh, another chance at the book. And as we saw, it's rewritten everything again. Barry and Oliver are now criminals and Barry's no longer a speedster again. So, and we've got, of course, the black suit Superman. Oh, other side note, really good that the monitor pointed out that the reason that Barry and Oliver and Cisco were able to see through, like not really affected by what happened, well, Cisco a little bit, but was because they're so far the ones who are proving true to his tests of the best warriors. So that's kind of cool to find out that those two are considered like the creme de la creme of Earth One. So yeah, good episode. Definitely ready to see how this all culminates. So I hope you enjoyed watching this along with me, guys. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.